Hi, BookTube. It's Gina. Happy Monday. Hope you're doing well. I am here today to talk to you about five more of my cozy book recommendations. Now, the stack I've got here, I'll show you. These are the five. Um, three of these books I have read, and I will share some quick quotes with you from each of them because they're delightful. And two of them I have not read, but I owned them. And they are recommendations on my last video from commenters who said, oh, you've got to try these books. And I just realized I owned a couple of them. So these two I have not read. The first is Firefly Summer by Maeve Binchy. And I hear Maeve Binchy compared quite often to Rosamond Pilcher, although I think she is, I'm not sure, is she Scottish or Irish um, rather than English? I'm not positive on that, but may have been she, this is a big chunky book, so this might be a fun one to settle into, uh, but I have not read it yet. So I am basing this recommendation off of a commenter, but this does, I mean, look at that cover. It does sound really interesting. This is a, a story about Kate Ryan and her husband have a rollicking pub in the Irish village, uh, four lovely children and wonderful dreams, but all that is about to change when American millionaire Patrick O'Neill shows up. So this sounds like a juicy tale. Um, and then this lovely gray Persephone, if you can see the title of this one, is The Priory by Dorothy Whipple. And this has been, I've owned this for a while. I bought this uh, several months ago, many months ago from Persephone. And just because it was so beautiful, look at this. It's got the beautiful purple and, or blue and red flowered end papers with a matching bookmark. And I don't know much about this book, but I do have it slated to read in December as a buddy read with our friend Britta. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but this was another recommendation for a cozy from one of uh, one of you down in my comments. So keep those keep those comments coming if you've got any other favorite cozies that you love. And this is just gorgeous. Now I will probably, you know me, I'll probably end up buying this one on my Kindle too, just because mm, this copy is so beautiful. I kind of hate to even even take a chance of getting it messed up, but. We'll see. Uh, so this is a this is one that's definitely going to get read in December. And then this these three are three that I have read. And this one I just read um, in September. It is called A Place to Hang the Moon. And this is a middle grade book. So if you like middle grade, I would check this out. Look at this cover with the three orphans, which is, I have to tell you, one of my favorite middle grade tropes, the the orphans. This is set in England, just at the beginning of World War II, and the orphans are going to be evacuated to the country, and they have a preposterous plan in mind to try to find a new family. And this is just one of the sweetest middle grade books I've read in a long time. So one of the things I love so much and, and that is cozy to me are domestic details and setting details. And this one is um, has a lot of really cozy domestic details in it. So this is the orphans um, who are now staying with a librarian. And it says the librarian retrieved a bottle of milk from the icebox, pouring a generous measure into a copper pot and bringing one of the stove top burners to life. She went to the cupboard and withdrew a sugar bowl and a block of something wrapped in brown paper. The children's eyes went wide. Surely it couldn't be chocolate. And yet it was. Anna nearly wept as Mrs. Mueller spooned sugar into the milk, then shaved bits of chocolate off the block with a paring knife and added those. She stirred the potion with a wooden spoon. Isn't that just, and it just goes on from there. And it's, it's wonderful 
very sweet, easy read. Um, you know, some the children, the children do have some some trials and tribulations, but it's um it's a wonderful, sweet middle grade story. Now, for the two that are not middle grade, the first one that I want to recommend this is the House of Unexpected Sisters by Alexander McCall Smith. This just happens to be the only one of these that I own, but this is. A wonderful series is the number one ladies de ladies detective agency, and the protagonist of this is Ma Ramatswa, and she lives in Botswana, and she starts a detective agency. So start with number one, which is the number one ladies detective agency. This is very much further on in the series, but I'm going to read you a little quote from this one because um, this is just the one that I own. I don't own all of the other ones. And so this is a scene, another another food scene, which I just I just love. Um, so Ma Ramatsua believed in using your nose while cooking. Too many people, she thought, relied on taste and were always dipping a spoon into a dish to see how it was faring. In her view, that was unnecessary and unhygienic. You could find out everything you needed to know through the sense of smell. A good stew smelled like a well, a good stew. It would, it would remind you of that time when the sun has just sunk over the Kalahari, when the cattle have been brought back into their crawl against a backdrop of gentle lowing, when the moon is floating up in the sky over Botswana and the children are sitting about the fire waiting for their dinner. It smelled like that. And I just, I love Mara Matswa. She cooks, she makes pumpkin. She solves very um, non, for the most part, non-threatening mysteries. It's a very, very sweet mystery series. And I just love the cozy details in this of Mara Matsua and her, her husband, her children. And it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful series. And then lastly, book number five is by Elizabeth von Armen. This is The Enchanted April, and this is a Dover Thrift edition. I'd love to find this in an old, actual vintage hardback, so I'm going to keep this on my search for used list. The Enchanted April, this was actually also made into a wonderful, wonderful movie. I think the movie might actually even be, dare I say, better than the book. Um, the book is delightful, but the movie is very evocative. It's so well done, very cozy, beautiful scenery, wonderful food scenes, wonderful scenes of, of character growth and exploration and learning about themselves. And so this is about four women who are in London during the 1920s. They all have, they're in, it's, it's in the rainy season and they are all just feeling very, frustrated with their lives and disappointed with where things are heading and they're they're just bummed because the weather is bad and oh I I certainly identify this with this a lot especially in in Seattle here in in March I oftentimes feel that I need an April vacation and frequently my trip planning does <laughs> include an April vacation not unfortunately to the Italian coast but um, someplace warm here close by me. Uh, but this is, so it's a story of four women that go to spend a month in a castle covered with wisteria in Italy. And it's just beautiful. Um, this is a scene in the, in, as, as they've arrived um, about the beauty of their, of their setting. Um, and it says the visitors could not be blind to it. It was too arresting after London in a particularly wet and gloomy March, suddenly to be transported to that place where the air was so still that it held its breath, where the light was so golden that the most ordinary things were transfigured, to be transported into that delicate warmth, that caressing fragrance, and to have the old gray castle as the setting, and in the distance, the serene, clear hills of Paragunis backgrounds was an astonishing contrast. Even Lady Caroline, used to all her life to beauty, who had been everywhere and seen everything, felt the surprise of it. It was that year a particularly wonderful spring, and all the months at San Salvatore 
April, if the weather was fine, was best. Isn't that beautiful? So this, I'm going to, I'm going to do a reread of this. It's been a while since I've read this. I've watched the movie a number of times. I've only read the book once, but I, I just, I absolutely love it. So those are five more cozy recommendations. I will have more to come because you know, I love my cozy books and talking about them just fills me with warmth and a feeling of, of happiness. And I would love to hear any additional recommendations that you might have down in the comments. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.